Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 93rd live stream geometry. Um, interesting. It doesn't show my picture in the center. But um, so today we're going to go over some more problems from the Discord Geometry Olympiad. Uh, and so I've been wanting to do the Iranian geometry still. They still haven't released the problems. So we're going to keep doing problems from the um, geometry discussions and problems Discord server. Uh, so if you want to join us in the future, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, that's in the description of the video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. Uh, so we have six people here with us so far, and I'm going to share my screen. So let's get started on the first problem. Uh, this is supposed to be a hard one, so we'll see how hard it is. Um, so we draw the Euler line of the triangle, and we see where it intersects the lines from B and C perpendicular to BC. Um, so let me make this look a little nicer. All right. So I'm going to draw the Euler line here. Let's O be the center and H be the orthocenter. It's O and H is the orthocenter. OH is the Euler line, it passes through the centroid and it passes through the nine point center. Um, so here is the Euler line. And then we draw the perpendiculars from B and C to BC. So let's see if I can make it. Sorry, sorry about that. So it's going to intersect at X and Y. There we go. That looks a little better. So this is X. And this is Y. And then the perpendicular from X to AB meets the perpendicular from Y to AC at point Z. And it looks like Z lies on BC. So I don't know if this is obvious or easy to prove. Um, so we'll, we'll try to prove that in just a second. Okay, I'll leave it like that. So kind of step one is, is we wanna prove Z lies on BC. And then it says construct equilateral triangle BTC. So let's make this a little smaller so we could see that triangle. All right. Okay, so right now it's like off the page. Um, but see something like this and let's make it look better there we go and if so this is t so i'm going to make this look nice for just a second we want to prove that z a is equal to z t all right so let me hide this hide this Hide pretty much everything. All right, so it looks like we're going to want to use some kind of lemma about the Euler line. 
Um, so yeah, first, can we show that Z lies on BC? I wonder if these circles are tangent. No, they're not. So we don't know yet that Z lies on BC, but we know that this would be a cyclic quadrilateral, uh, AEZB. And is that really, I don't think that passes through O, no. Let's make it a little bigger. Um, a, E, Z, B. So we know that this is a right angle and we know that this is a right angle. So we don't know that Z lies on B, C, but we know that A, E, Z, B should be cyclic. Yes. So x b squared is x e times x z, which is the power of x with respect to that. I think we have o x equals uh, o i. O x is equals o i. Yes, that's true. Just, um, yeah, it's not hard. Yeah, it's kind of obvious because if you draw the perpendicular from o to b c, it passes through the midpoint. So yeah, o x equals o y. Um, So yeah, we have a lot of like right triangles, like OBT is right with altitude BF, BXE is right with altitude BE. But yeah, is it obvious? Yeah, how do how should we prove? Like, I wonder if we could let XE intersect BC at Z prime, and we could let YD intersect BC at Z double prime and show that those are the same point. Uh, I wonder if that kind of idea might work. Um, so yeah, OX equals OY. And from there, how do we show that Z lies on BC? Um, of course, this, if we draw the altitude from A, that might be useful then that point would lie on that circle. So A, E, G, F, B. Thanks for joining, Leia. So we have a good crowd here. So A, E, G, yeah, we want to show that Z lies on that circle. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Well, all we have to do is show that this, oh, I think it's obvious by an angle chase, right? Um, because if we basically, if we let X E intersect it at Z prime, then we can show that Z prime lies on the circle A E G. Oh, but we need to show A E G B is cyclic. Um, so yeah, if we draw these, let's, could we show that, once we show AEGB is cyclic, um, then I think it's it's obvious that these meet at a point on BC. Um, and, okay, so if I hid this for a second, let's say I just drew this, is it obvious that AEGB is cyclic? I wonder if ED is parallel to BC.
Um, let's see. No, it's not true that ED is parallel to BC. Um, Yeah, how do we show that's cyclic? Or what we could do, it might be easier to do it like this. So basically show that, define Z prime like this, and, and then we know that this is cyclic. And we could let it cut, we could let it cut this at D. And then we could try to show that Y, D, and Z are collinear. That's another way to do it. Um, so yeah, Z, D, we know is perpendicular. Um, we need to show that these are collinear. And we can, so we can, def we can calculate CY in terms of, CY is 2OF minus BX, I think. Um, let's think about this. So xe times xz equals xb squared, and that's the power of x with respect to the circle. Um, we want to show that yd times yz is yc squared, um, which would be the power of y with respect to the circle. Is there any other way we could get the powers? So if I draw the center of that circle, it's going to be the midpoint. Let's see. So yeah, these circles almost look tangent, but that's not necessarily true. It's like another point here. And A, I, and Z are collinear, but not necessarily with O. Hmm. 
Let's see, what's the best way to go about this? I have one idea. Oh, wait, now I wonder. Okay, what if so let's say I just define things like this, then we could show that A, E, G, Z is cyclic, right? And then I could similarly show A, D, G, Z is cyclic. Or well, oh, but I'd have a Z and a Z prime, and that's the problem. But but basically these lie on this. Yeah, if I can show A E D G is cyclic, that would solve it. Um, there's gotta be a way to do that. Let me think, how do we show A, E, D, G is cyclic? We could even get rid of this Z for now. Maybe it's the power ratio. Shield, I'm uh, What is I? I forgot what I is. Yeah, I don't know if it's easier to show AEDG is cyclic or to show that these concur on BC. I think we should find a way to prove AEGD is cyclic. Okay. It's easier. Um, oh, it doesn't solve the whole problem, but it proves. So, Leia just asked me uh, what's Kind of what's the benefit of proving AEGD is cyclic? It doesn't solve the whole problem, but what it does is it shows that Z, it shows that these two concur at point Z. Because once we know AEGD is cyclic, then if I let XE intersect this side at a point, then I could show that that point lies on that circle um, by an angle chase. Because basically, I could show. Like if I let X E intersect it at Z prime, then I could show that by an angle chase that E A G is E Z prime G. So I could show that Z prime lies on this circle. And then similarly, if Y D met B C at a point, I could show that that lied on the circle A E D G. And so then that would mean that these would concur at a point that lies on B C. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, but that doesn't actually solve the whole problem. That just proves that these meet on BC. Once, once I show that, then I have to show that ZA equals ZT. 
but still, I think we have to prove that Z lies on BC. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Ryan, thanks for joining. So this is our first problem. Um, so yeah, we just got started. And yeah, basically I hid the point Z here. Uh, we're trying to show that this point Z lies on BC. So yeah, you draw the Euler line of the triangle through O and H. And then the perpendiculars from B and C meet at X and Y. And then the perpendiculars from X and Y to these sides of the triangle meet at Z. First, we're trying to show that Z lies on BC. And then once we do that, we want to show that ZA equals ZT, where T is, is a point such that BCT is equilateral. All right, so I'm going to hide this first. So we could try to use angle chasing. Uh, yeah, what other ways are there? Well, we could try to show that um, I don't know if we could use inversion. So these triangles right here, these triangles are similar to ABG and ACG, this and this. So that might help. Yeah, I keep saying my internet connection is unstable. Oh, well. Is there another point that lies on the circle besides point Z? Maybe, maybe this point is useful. I don't know if I, H, and F are collinear or something like that. No, not I, H, and F, but. There's something special about point I. Maybe we could show that lies on the circle with the rest of them. I don't think so, though. OK, I'm just going to delete point I. I feel like it's just confusing. So I wonder if this has to be the Euler line for this to be cyclic, or if, I guess if it was like this line, it wouldn't be true. Um,
So yeah, I could try to bash it. Like for example, I could. Like we have I B squared is I E times I X. Um, and I E and I X, maybe I can calculate both of those. Because I E B is similar to A B G, right? So I E over I B. Because hmm. we have x e times i e is e b squared, right? That might be useful. Hmm. We also, like if we draw it like this, then we know that's cyclic. So we have BG times BI is BE times AB. Yeah, it seems like this should uh, reduce some somewhat to similar triangles. Let, let me write this on a sheet of paper. But I think, um, like proving that these concur here might just be a bunch of similar triangles. So, um, as we have BG times BI. is BE times BA. Um, actually, let, let me call this Z prime for now. So BE times BG times BZ prime. Um, I think I have, I'm sorry, but I think I've proven that Z lies on the, on BC. Okay. Yeah, and I think we can use the ratio like like you said. So um can you draw the altitudes from B and C? Yes. And now let's call them I and J. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Um, the idea is that um, if you let Z prime be X, the intersection of X, E, and B, C, like you did, mm -hmm. then we will have B, Z. I'm sorry. Um... Over E, J. So if we can, and we do the same thing with line Y, D, we'll let it meet at a point of Z1. Then we can also calculate that um. ratio so we need to prove that be over ej is equal to um, di over dc or um you, you mean that those add up to one those ratios or well, well i guess you could flip it and yeah okay so we need to show that be over ej is di I mean, over dc right yeah so um let i'm going to prove this So we're gonna let BX meet um, CJ at a point. Okay, BX and CJ, all right. Let's call it, um, yeah, let's call it K. And the nice. same thing to the other one. 
So this is where I use the fact that um, XE is perpendicular to AB. So we have BE over EJ is um, BX over XK. So okay. however, we have BK and CL are parallel and um, XHY are collinear. So um, BX over XK is actually um, YL over YC. So it's is, is Oh, because they all concur at H. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. And that that proves that Z that these concur at a point on BC. Okay. Very interesting. All right. So I could type that up. Um So I'll, I'll, I'll just start out typing up that point of the proof for everyone who's watching. Um, so let B, let X, E, um, so let E be the um, foot of altitude from, um, B, sorry, from X to AB. Let it meet BC at Z prime. And then So we have BZ prime over Z prime C is BE over EJ. Um, I'll just say define K as shown. I'm lazy. So, right, and L. <laughs> Okay, so BZ prime over Z prime C equals BX over XK, which is LY over YC. BX over XK, which is equal to LY over YC. Um, I'll say define Z double prime similarly on the other side. LY over YC would be um, B Z double prime over Z double prime C. Um, and that means that Z prime equals Z double prime equals Z lies on B C. All right. All right, so that's step one. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Step two is to show that Z A equals Z T. Um, I think you have a typo um, at the second um, equivalent. Um, I mean, um, the BX over X, yeah, you're missing a uh... oh, Yeah. Um, BX over X, K. Thanks. And then once we know that, is, yeah, it is equivalent to saying that um, the circumcircle AEZ 
um, it passes through the midpoint of AT. That is equivalent to the problem. Oh, really? Okay. What is equivalent to the problem? Oh, has the fun. Um, uh, AEZ passing through the midpoint of AT. Yeah, AEZ. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 I see. Because, yeah, because if um, the midpoint of eight, if this is the midpoint of AT, then since this is a right angle, because these are all right angles in this cyclic quad, then that would mean that by symmetry ZA is equal to ZT. Yeah, I understand it now. Yeah. So AEGZD is cyclic by right angles. Sorry, let me fix that. So AT, um, it looks like it's a median almost, but it's not. I just drew the picture that way. It's not, these are not necessarily tangents to the circle. We'll just have to remember that so that the diagram doesn't look so messy. All right. It looks like uh, ZX is equal to ZY. Or maybe I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. Never mind. Uh, sorry. Yeah, OX is equal to OY. Um, so maybe we could use that somehow. Do we know that? Uh, yeah, we know that OX is equal to OY because um, like if F is the midpoint of BC, um, like it's it's true by symmetry because these are both perpendiculars. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I guess we could. So we could let the, let it meet the circle at M and then try to show M as the midpoint of AT. So almost looks like the midpoint of the median. Well, but yeah, it's not, obviously. So yeah, AZ is a diameter, we know that. And we could draw the center of this circle. It's going to be the midpoint of AZ. And so it's kind of the same. It's the same as showing that NM is parallel to ZT, but N is not necessarily on BI like that. Maybe we should uh, take it on account that uh, TMFZ is cyclic. 
TMFZ. Interesting. That is by 90 degree angles. Yeah. But it obviously does depends on how we define points. Yeah. I kind of like that. So let M be the intersection. Well, if, if M is the intersection, then we know TMFZ is cyclic. Um, and yeah, we want to show it's the midpoint. Um, I guess one way to do it is to show the power of A with respect to this circle uh, is the same as the power of T with respect to this circle. Um, hi, Peter. Thanks for joining. Let's see, I don't think there he is. Hey, Peter. Um, Yeah, Peter Zeus. So Peter, is this your first time on the channel? <laughs> Who is? <laughs> so I can't believe it. I've never heard of uh, Peter Zeus before. Maybe I've heard of him under a different name, but. Okay, someone from Vietnam. Or P Peter, uh, if you don't mind, what country are you from? Oh. Yeah, this bothers me that it looks like N lies on H I. That looks a little better to me. So yeah, I mean, basically, we want to show these circles are congruent, right? So basically, if we could show ZT, let me think about this. Yeah, we want to show these circles are congruent. We know this is collinear because that's. Yeah, if we could show these are the same size, that would solve it. Maybe Ptolemy, it's kind of a weird idea, but. Ptolemy doesn't look that bad actually, but MG is kind of a weird, that might be hard.
Okay, let's see. Um, I don't think this will do much, but let's see. If I draw this circle, Obviously, it'd be tangent to that circle in this one, but let's see if the power of a point idea can be used useful at all. So TM times TA, uh, maybe we could extend Z. Uh, it doesn't look like it really intersects anywhere special. I don't think. I don't think there's anything special about this point. Oops. Oh, maybe it's collinear with H. No. What do what is collinear with H? No, it's not true. I was thinking maybe Q on an H are collinear, but that's not true. Okay. We have to use, oh, that's an equilateral triangle. That's a tricky thing. So yeah, I think there's still a ways to go on this problem if we solve it. Well, I guess all we really need is that FT, the ratio FT over BC. Like we could show that we could try to show that ZF squared plus FT squared is ZG squared plus GA squared. I don't know if that just is like a bash or something. This FZ is just FC minus ZC. So yeah, this might this might be reducible to just a bash. Um, I'm gonna write this out on a paper. So CC is BC times CD over CI. FT is BC root three over two. And then we want GZ. So can we calculate GZ? That would be Yeah, this might be messy, but I feel like it might reduce to a bash. is CG minus CZ. Of 
and that's B, C. Yeah, I'm trying to see what the algebra times C, G over B, C. Minus C, Z is C, C over B, C. Okay. CD or CI. But yeah, the ratio AG over BC is tricky. I think the problem is equivalent to saying that mg is equal to mf. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, angle mgf is angle mgz is angle maz. Okay. Similarly, um, mfg is mtz. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, so it's just about mg equals mf. mg equals and mf. We can just know and we can just delete all the points um, E and D and stuff. We just keep those uh, necessary points. Yeah, this is very great since we delete most of the problem. All right. Um, Maybe I'll just hide things one by one. Sometimes it makes it easier. So okay. So hmm, is this obvious actually? Since we know that tf is equal to ag i mean parallel tf is parallel to ag and m is midpoint of at oh we're trying to prove m is the midpoint of at oh so wait so we define it as a midpoint of midpoint or differently basically i defined it as the intersection of this circle with this line with AT, and then I could show that this is also cyclic too. Mm. Oh, okay. Wait, so we cannot we cannot delete point Z yet. We cannot delete D and E yet. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I have a mistake, but okay. Still, Sorry. we can try to prove that NG equals to MF. Yeah, I agree. That would be the same thing. But yeah, from what you said, it makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe the law of sum, because we want to use that FT equals BC root three over two. Um, So yeah, basically by the law of signs, it's like saying we want to show sine AMG over AG is sine of TMF over TF. Hmm. 
Yeah, actually, this might not. Hmm. Wait, that's the same as saying ZF. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so by the law of signs, um, let me see who's still on, sorry. Um, so basically angle GAM is equal to angle MTF, right? Um, and by the law of signs, we have sine GAM over GM um, equals something. And then we have sine MTF over MF is equal to something. So if we wanna show GM equals MF, then that would be the same as using the law of signs on the other angles. So we'd want to show that sine AMG over AG um, is equal to sine TMF over FT. Um, so let me think about that. So that means uh, one over GZ. Hmm. Now I'm getting confused. I don't think that's easier because we don't have M lies on circle A, G, Z. Oh, um, well, I guess M isn't defined to be the midpoint though. Like we know M lies on AGC if we define, but like basically I'm not defining M to be the midpoint. I'm defining this circle to intersect the line at point M. Um, But yeah, I don't think it makes it easier. I agree. It just goes in a circle. All right, so yeah, I'm trying to use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see. So yeah, MF equals MG. Are there any congruent triangles anywhere? Well, 
unless unless MGE is congruent to MFC, but I don't think that's true. That doesn't look true. Um, I could try this. So yeah, I like the idea of trying to define this by the Pythagorean theorem, but then ZT, but then ZA, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. Do you have any similar triangles? Z A D Hmm. So TF is BC root three over two. FZ, oh, I can't just join. Maybe we can reflect T over BC and prove Z is the center of ATT prime. All right. Uh, let's try that. So if we reflect T over BC, um, that should lie on the circumcircle of ABC, right? Uh, sorry, I forgot to reflect that line. So that, well, not necessarily. Yeah, that's not necessarily gonna lie on the circumcircle. Um, we wanna show Z is the center of ATT prime. That could work. Obviously, T prime would lie on this. I don't think it passes through that intersection point of the circle now. Um, yeah, that's another way to do it. We could try to draw that circle and see if there's anything special about it. So yeah, Hakan, um, we made a, a good amount of progress on this problem, but yeah, we still haven't solved it. Move the diagrams a little bit.
All right, I'm gonna spend, yeah, maybe 10 more minutes and then maybe move on to the next problem. Um, Adding the midpoint of AT prime. Uh, so, so you think it might be better to name it at, to let M be the midpoint? Uh, adding the midpoint of a t prime. So I don't know which definition is better, but okay. A t prime. Well, n n t prime. A t prime. Okay. Sorry, one sec. It's that point. Yeah. By symmetry, I think we should have a, like another 90 degree angle, or more precisely, that Q lies on this little, little circle. Okay. By symmetry of the problem. Um, Interesting. See if I can try it better. You know what? Uh, F Z A T prime is, is cyclic, right? No, I don't know why. Oh, sorry, I thought that would be a right angle. It was wrong. So you got GZ Let me think about this. So AZ that's the diameter of the circle. So is there another diameter that we can calculate? This is also a diameter. And RZ should be perpendicular. Get rid of that. So yeah, we can think of this as like the circumcircle of ZEB.
Is there any formula for like the circumradius of a triangle? So I'm thinking triangle ZEB. I want to show the circumradius of it is equal to ZT or, or, or half of ZT, which is ZF squared. Again, plus it was a law of sines. Okay. So for triangle BZ, E, right? Mm -hmm. Well, since uh, it is 90 degree, BZ is 90 degrees, so BZ is actually the di diameter. Yeah. So it finds the circumradius, but generally you could, uh, for example, get. Uh, I was uh, thinking ZED, for example. Okay, ZED. Um, I, I have an idea, but I haven't proven it yet, and it's kind of a little tricky. Okay. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this lemma, where I let the uh, perpendicular bisector of AT meet uh, BC at Z prime. Okay, the perpendicular bisector of AT meet meet BC at Z prime. So basically, you can you can calculate the ratio of ZB over ZC. Okay. In terms of AB and AC. So it's um, ZB over ZC is actually um, AB square minus um, BT square divided by um, AC square minus um, CT square. Okay. So yeah, so let's call that point Z prime. Then we have that ratio. And uh, we try to prove that ZB over ZC is equal to Z prime B over Z prime C. Uh, ZB over ZC equals Z prime B over Z prime C. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it works. Okay. So then, um, like, we wouldn't know that Z Z prime lies on this circle, right? So we would just have something like this. No, I mean that. Um, we let Z prime be the intersection of the perpendicular bisector with BC. Mm -hmm. And uh, we and we use the old point, the uh, the point Z originally. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe from the original point Z, we can calculate ZB over ZC. And then we know that Z prime B over Z prime C is actually AB square minus um, BT square over AC square minus CT square. Okay. Okay. So if we draw if we draw it like this, um, where this is a perpendicular bisector, then you're saying that BZ squared minus ZC or BZ over ZC is this squared minus this squared. So um, so sorry. I'll write it. So, so you so we know that BZ prime over CZ prime is equal to um, what do we know that's equal to? Um, it's a fraction where it's um, it's AB square minus BT square over AC square. BT squared over um, AC squared um, minus CT squared. Like that. And BT square, CT square, and BT square is just BC square. It's just BC square. Yeah, and that's where we use the fact that um, that is an equilateral. Okay. These are both, like, at least in this picture, these both look kind of like negative numbers if BC is the bigger side. Um, so like, well, the only thing about this is it, it almost looks like, so this is like a negative number. Maybe it's like we could take absolute values or something. Um, like um, there's something called oriented um, length, I think. I don't know what was it called in English, but. Um, okay. Basically Z, I think it's algebra um, ratio or something. Basically okay. Z prime B over Z prime C can be negative or positive um, if the vector ZB and ZC are um, in the same direction or opposite. 
Okay. And you said this is a lemma. So it's just a general lemma that these are equal. If like you take the perpendicular bisector and it meets it at a point. Yeah, it's true for any point T in the plane. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's a little tricky one. That's a nice lemma. Okay, so, so then we just wanna show under the uh, original definition of Z that it's the same ratio. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna draw those two circles back in. And then we wanna see if we can show the same thing. So Z B squared, Z E times Z X, Z C squared is Z B times Z Y. Um, uh, maybe we can now use uh, cross ratios. Um, okay. So if we, uh, Intersect uh, CH with uh, BX. CH with BX. Yeah. Sorry, Le Le I'll, I'll repeat the lemma in just a second. Um, let me see. Then uh, BZ over ZC, like Z in the original problem. Mm -hmm. would be equal to bx or uh, xk and you project uh, that cross ratio bkx infinity through h onto bc okay. b goes to b k goes to c x goes to the intersection of euler line with bc and uh, infinity goes to g okay and we can handle point g but we need to like uh, calculate uh, th that uh, ratio for the intersection of uh, Euler line. And I don't know how to do it, but it looks very doable. All right. Okay, so Leia. Um... The lemma that Khan was saying, which I'd actually never heard this before, is that let's say you have any triangle ABC and you have any point T in the plane. If you take the perpendicular bisector of AT uh, and you let it intersect BC at a point, let's say Z prime, then this first equality holds true. So I'd never seen this before, but apparent, but um, it seems like a pretty useful lemma. So so yeah, it could be any any triangle like this, and any other point, and then you take the perpendicular bisector of S W, um, and then you see where it meets U V. So I'm gonna just make it a little easier here. Um, then if that's true, then we would have uz over zv is su squared minus uw squared over sv squared minus vw squared. That seems like a really cool lemma. Um, Yeah. All right, so Okay, so BZ over CZ is BX over XK and then we can project through H onto BC and that's BCGR. So we want to show the cross ratio BCGR is equal to this. Um, so 
So BG over GC. Um, yeah. Seems doable. So let me unhide a couple things. Point L here. And this point I'm going to unhide. And it I mean, oh, this does not pass through OF, so I don't want to make it look like that. Um, I think that's okay. So what I was thinking, so if IJ intersects the set of point, um, let's call it S, like we know, B, G, C, S is harmonic. Maybe we could use that to calculate B, C, G, R, because both would have B, G over G, C. Um, although I'm not sure how that, how, let's see. Yeah, actually, maybe that's not so useful. Yeah, it reduces to showing that cross ratio equals this. And we could even divide numerator and denominator by BC squared. So if we wanted. Mm, that would induce some like Semedian stuff. Since mm. uh, when you have those um, sides divided and then squared, that is like the ratio uh, the Semedian divides. The Semedian uh, divides the other side, right? For example, AB squared over AC squared would be the same ratio that uh, AC median divides uh, side BC. BC, yeah. So if we took the two Semedians and we figured out the ratios and then we subtracted one, Divided of them that would give uh, this. That's what we want to show. So I like this idea, um, but we're halfway through the session. So do you want to keep, do you want to try to finish this up or do you want to move on to the next problem? See if we could try an easier one. Let's do another one since this uh, looks just like uh, some bashing. Okay, I agree. Okay, so here's another riddle. Let's see if I could find, uh, let's do a, an easier problem for just for now. So. Like th this one looks like it's probably easier. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. And the perpendicular bisector of CD, we, we try to see where that intersects A, um, C. Okay. So first I'm just going to draw the whole, all the sides. Here's a perpendicular bisector. So it passes through the center of this circle. We call that O, whoops. Center of the circle is O. 
and it intersects a C at point E. I'll just draw it a line. And oops, let's make a C a little bit more. If I move D closer to C, then it'll intersect easier. Um, And if I move, it, yeah, it's probably better to move A like that. So here we go. Um, this is point E. And X lies on BC such that um, EX is parallel to CD. We could make this array. This is point X. And we want to show the tangent at E of BEC by sex AX. Okay. Um, so yeah, another way to say that is that if we take the midpoint of AX, Let's make it not so, right now it looks so close to AB. So if we take the midpoint of AX, and then we draw the circumcircle BC, then we wanna show that EF is tangent to the circle. It's kind of random. Um, let's make it look better. Now, this is just such a random problem. So, yeah, I guess we don't need OE, although, I, yeah, it's probably easier because then we know that's the perpendicular bisector of CD. And we want to show that FE is tangent to that circle. I guess we could do it either way. I don't know if we want to define F to be the midpoint it's probably easiest to let the tangent intersect AF at X, intersect AX at F. Um, all right. Uh, maybe we can make the circle BCE a little smaller. Wait, we have done this on our session before. Oh, really? Yeah, the statement is a little different, but we have done this because I remember I was the one who solved it using the ah. butterfly theorem. Oh, this was the one with the butterfly theorem? Yeah. Um, let me okay. see which session it was. Let's see. Let's see when they posted this problem, 238. Um, so... Sorry, my computer is really slow. Oh, can you guys see my my um, computer screen? Let's see. So it's a middle riddle. Uh, two thirty. I thought it was two thirty eight. So it was. Huh. It says it's only five days ago. Um, but maybe it's just very similar to another problem we did. Let's see. Um, it's, it is the live stream geo ATA um, 88B. And uh, 88. So maybe they just repeated yeah. a problem on accident. Interesting. Um, it was the middle riddle 211. 211. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So we have a cyclical circuit center O. Hmm, this looks, cause this has like a circle through O, right? Um, N is the midpoint of AS. It looks kind of similar. 
Is it is it is it just a rephrasing of it? It is. It's just a rephrase. Okay, because OAD is like symmetric, so it's like the same problem, but they're just saying the perpendicular bisector of CD intersects it at E. Whereas here. So it's really just a rephrasing. Yeah. Interesting. So So I'm, let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this. So X, X is the intersection of OAD and AC, whereas here E is the intersection of the perpendicular bisector. So it's not like, is it, is it really exactly the same? Yeah, you can just draw circum circle AOD and you will see it passes to um, E. Oh, it's AOD instead. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And then we know it's cyclic. So because O is the midpoint of AD, uh, O is the midpoint of arc AD, and this, this is an angle bisector. Okay, so that's how it's equivalent. So yeah, it's the same thing. All right, this is a riddle. This looks easier, but still, I, I wanna see if I can get something easier. So like, 